Even real life. Thank you, and good morning. Will all sergeants please start their recordings? Good recording is up. Thank you. All recording is going. Thank you. Backup is rolling. Thank you, and good morning, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council vote on the Committee on Governmental Operations. At this time, would all council members and council staff please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent mode. Thank you, Chair. We are ready to begin. Well, good morning. My name is Fernando Cabrera. I'm the Chair of the Committee on Governmental Operations. We have been joined by, by my colleagues and members of the committee. We have Council Member Ampre Samuel, Council Member Yeager, Council Member Perkins, Council Member Thelma Diaz, Council Member Mycel, Council Member Kosowe, Council Majority Leader Combo, Council Member Levin, Council Member Powers, Council Member Gavinchik. I believe that's all we have for right now. Today we'll be holding a vote on several pieces of legislation that represents a commitment to government transparency and civic engagement. As I was said in the past, 311 is the average New York's phone line to city government. It is important that 311 is responsive that city agencies are efficient in resolving complaints and that the public maintains its trust in the systems. It is also critical that the city resources be, wide, wide, be used wisely, especially in this time of crisis. In the spirit of making 311 work better, <coughs> excuse me, for New Yorkers, the committee will be voting on proposed introduction number 1420C, sponsored by Minority Leader and Council Member Mario, which will require the city to study the frequency of certain anonymous 311 complaints and determine whether such complaints are more likely to be unsubstantiated. And proposed introduction number 1832B, sponsored by myself, which will require 311 to notify each city agency when a service request has not been closed within the time frame stated in the city in the agency's service level agreement. This bill will ensure the city agencies which have agreed to respond to complaints within certain time frames are holding up to the end of the agreement. I am very grateful to the administration for working with us on this bill. Today's vote also concerns the upcoming citywide election. Right now, the city's first ranked choice election is being held in Council District 24. Early voting is on the way and stakeholders across the city have already conducted many ranked choice voting trainings in town halls. Looking ahead to the citywide primaries in June, it is critical that all city voters understand how ranked choice voting works and they feel comfortable with it. That is why I'm proud that the Committee on Governmental Operations is voting on proposed introduction 1994A sponsored by Council Member Ampre Samuel which will require the Campaign Finance Board to take additional steps to ensure all New Yorkers understand the new ranked choice voting system. Thank you to my colleagues for joining today's vote. To the committee staff, called on the Dream Team, Committee Council, C.J. Murray, Senior Pol Policy Analyst, Emily Forjohn, and Elizabeth Kwan, Senior Finance Analy Analyst, Sebastian Bacci, and to my Communication Legislative Director, Claire McLevain. I will let, uh, at this moment, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Council Member Amprey Samuel uh, to give a statement on her bill. Thanks, Chair, for the opportunity to speak on my bill intro 1994. And first, I wanna also say that 30 of us in the city council have already signed on to this bill. And so I just wanna thank everybody for the support. And so we already know the, the necessity of it. Um, voters voted in November of 2019 for ranked choice voting in New York City. That was November of 2019. And in February of 2020, I stood in front of the Board of Elections in a very small press conference and called on the city of New York to set aside funding in the budget to make sure that we are reaching every single voter and in particular voters that have been historically disenfranchised to make sure that they knew what was happening, that they knew that ranked choice voting was passed and that we there was a strategic plan to educate voters on the system itself. And that was again in February of 2020. 
I then introduced this bill in July of 2020. And I understand that the city was going through a global pandemic. And this was not something that was prioritized because we were trying to save lives because of COVID as well as a federal election that ended in November of 2020. And so this committee heard the bill and I'm very thankful for that hearing. Um, but I really wish that we were able to move forward earlier in making sure that voters were educated on ranked choice voting prior to today when they, we are clearly in the middle of a special election. And so with that being said, I just wanted to highlight just four key points of the legislation that is a little different from what we see campaign finance doing currently, as well as the Board of Elections. One, this bill will ensure that the Campaign Finance Board distributes a postcard to each and every household in New York City with a registered voter. So that every household would receive a postcard that is not part of the standard campaign finance voters guide that is sent out and you have to sift through a huge book looking for information. So this would be a clear postcard. And this bill would require that ads be published citywide in ethnic media outlets. And that's something different as well, because we know that the huge need is for people in certain communities that don't necessarily get information or um, there's no strategy around outreaching to the most vulnerable. And so this would require a citywide campaign within ethnic media outlets. A third huge piece of it would include um, informational material that is in large print, working with the Department of the Aging. And not just for our seniors and our elderly, but also those that are visually impaired. So the materials that are sent out to the home have to be in large print. And the last piece of it that I wanted to highlight is that the Campaign Finance Board shall collaborate with community-based organizations, such as civil rights organizations, disability rights groups, organizations serving public housing residents, and organizations that serve the uh, underrepresented. And so in closing, you know, clearly this. I'm sorry, uh, Council Member, you, you're muted. So in closing, <laughs> this bill is simply to codify the work that is already being done in the, um, the Campaign Finance Board as well as the Board of Elections, but is to make sure that there's a strategic plan in place to reach every single voter in the city of New York. And the bill does not expire until December, 20, uh, December of 2025. So again, thank you so much. And I also want to thank Common Cause and um, for their hard work and everyone else who worked on this bill. And like I said, we've been, this been out there for a very long time. Um, and I'm glad to see it's finally, um, you know, being voted on today. So thank you so much. Thank you. And now I'll, I will turn it over to the clerk to call the roll. Good morning, William Martin Committee Clerk, roll call vote Committee on Governmental Operations, introductions 1420C, 1832B, and 1994A. All items are coupled. Chair Cabrera. I'll vote aye and encourage all my colleagues to vote aye in all, in all the bills presented today. Thank you. Rodriguez. I vote aye. Thank you. Levin. I vote aye on all, and I'd like to request uh, my name be added to the list of sponsors for all the bills being voted on at this hearing. Thank you. You got it. Uh, Kalos. No. Mizell. Yes. <clears throat> Perkins. You're muted, Councilmember Perkins. Yes. Yes. I vote Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Powers. Aye. Jaeger. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. May I be uh, briefly excused to explain my vote? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Good morning. Um, I am uh, proud to uh, sponsor, co-sponsor all three of these bills uh, uh, with you, Mr. Chair, and Council Member Ampri Samuel and the Minority Leader. Uh, very rarely do we get a chance to do wise things, um, uh, and, and I'm happy to be a part of that. Uh, specifically with respect to Council Member Ampri Samuel bill, I just want to uh, speak on that for a moment. Uh, I, am, I am proud to be this uh, Council Member Ampri Samuel's second co-sponsor on this, and although I am known to uh, uh, not have not supported ranked choice voting. And in my district, the voters overwhelmingly rejected ranked choice voting wisely in my view. Uh, I think that uh, this is the very least we can do to provide the, uh, the resources necessary uh, to educate voters uh, as this is really coming up the pike and it's, it's right around the corner. Uh, it is $2 million anticipated to cost. Uh, I am hopeful that the campaign finance board God willing can be trusted to spend the money wisely. Um, uh, but I think it's very important that a roadmap uh, be, be written out as uh, Council Member Ampri Samuel did to uh, instruct the board on what it is that we expect. And uh, I hope that this experiment, which I, I am not, uh, not very confident that it will work uh, in favor of democracy, but I'm hopeful that the best we can do is provide the resources to educate voters. And for that reason, I am uh, co-sponsoring a bill that will cost at this time $2 million at a time that the city really can't afford it. With that, Mr. Chair, I'm grateful uh, to you and to the members of this committee, and I uh, thank you for that. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Dharma Diaz. I vote aye, and thank you for all your efforts. By a vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Do we, do we have all of the committee members? We did. Okay. Yeah. That will conclude today's uh, vote.